So again, hello everyone. My name is Lona Bielatska and I am a researcher in travel technology and I also call myself a travel futurist because I believe that technology is the right way to change the travel and to change the way we will travel in the future. And I would like to, today I would like to cover the topic of the COVID and especially post-COVID times, because as far as we all know, tourism is one of the most impacted industries. And we are trying to understand how we will travel in the future, especially when the pandemic will, will leave this planet, let's say. So firstly, I would like to start with some facts, how COVID-19 and tourism, uh, they're, let's say, connected. So as I, as I already mentioned, tourism is currently one of the most affected sectors because we can see that a lot of lots of people they're losing jobs and people can't travel. There there were quite a lot of travel restrictions, quarantine measures, lockdowns, etc. And all of this has been introduced across many countries. Some of them they are like let's say making these restrictions. Um, lighter, but still we can see that people can't travel to any place that they want. It's also impacted the way how the number of tourists, international special tourist arrivals declined between 20 and 30 percent. And believe me, it's quite a huge number because uh, mo most of the cities and countries which were relying most of the time on tourism, uh, they don't have any additional money to earn from tourists. And this also leads to the loss of uh, quite a huge number, as you can see on the screen, like uh, 30 to 50 billion of dollars in spending by tourist visitors to each of the city, meaning that lots of uh, cities, example like Paris, Venice especially, they were suffering during these times uh, because people didn't visit, visit these places. Uh, tourism is one of the areas uh, and sectors, let's say, which has most, mostly small and medium-sized enterprises, which make up around like 80% of the tourism sector. And let's say that these uh, small companies, they're mostly impacted because we, we can notice that small restaurants, small uh, hotels and any different places, they are closing because they cannot survive the crisis. Because COVID-19 is, is not only about like, uh, you know, virus, it's, more, it's also about the crisis and a lot of people, they can go through it. Another very prominent example here is like airlines go bankrupt and I think most most of you heard that like two months ago, Virgin Australia, they declared that they will stop, um, they will not exist anymore on the market. And let's and it was one of the second biggest airlines in Australia, could, could you imagine? And they couldn't survive this crisis. So this is like, this is already an example that something's going wrong and it's not the easiest times which we are going through now. And also pandemic could cause millions of jobs reduction in global tourism industry meaning that uh, lots of hotels, they cannot afford themselves to have the bigger, bigger number of employees. And a very good example here is like Airbnb layoffs. Like one month ago, the CEO of the Airbnb, Brancheski, he mentioned that they will, they will, they will ask 20% of their people in their like global market to ask to, uh, to leave the company. It was the hardest time for them, but you know, 25% of the, of the whole um, number of people is quite a huge number anyway. But still, tourism is suffering, it's from one hand, but from another one, tourism is quite uniquely positioned because it can help societies and communities, which are mostly affected, return to growth and stability. And we can see that lots of campaigns, different kind of flash mobs, they called, or initiatives has been grown because of these kind of things. For example, people are trying to make communities and uh, based on the interest, let's say, like, we want to travel to this place today, but we can go there tomorrow. So let's do something like this. Uh, world tourism organizations, like the leading organization in tourism, they stress on the collaboration between World Health Organization in order to make the change and the way tourism will be in the future, how it will look like. Uh, what I mentioned about like initiatives, one of one of them, it was this like don't cancel postpone, uh, because most of the travel companies that try to ask the, uh, their clients to change the date. It's the way how we can save tourism, not to 
cancel completely your trip. So if there is an option for you to postpone your trip until, let's say, next year, so please do it. Because this is the way how you, you are saving tourism, you are saving other jobs, saving other people, and, and saving the whole planet. Uh, now, moving to the fact like how COVID-19 AI, they are connected. Um, there is already an opinion that AI already helped greatly to address the issue of the COVID-19. And if we use it in a creative way, we can uh, we can go to the way how there is going to be change. So from their med tech and healthcare point of view, AI is already used for diagnostics and virus recognition. And if, for example, like if we, if, uh, if we could imagine we live in the times during the Spanish flu, which was exactly 100 years ago, it wasn't possible to do something like this because technology wasn't that advanced at this time. So we even couldn't, couldn't uh, call it technology, what, what they had one, 100, uh, 100 years ago. But still, all of this, what we have now, they're helping us for the fast drug discovery. Also, AI helped us to study the DNA and the structure of the virus. And it's already it's what's already been done by the Chinese scientists, by the way, because they apply different kind of neural networks in order to understand the structure and the nature of the virus, which help uh, not to create the vaccine because yes, of course we're still waiting for the vaccine for the, uh, to stop the virus, but we understand how and what can be applied in order to stop its spreading anyway. Uh, from the human perspective, or let's call it from societal perspective, AI, AI already used and can be used more frequently in future in order to deliver food supplies, let's say. And also AI can help us to perform similar to human tasks, because we can see that in, most of the, in some hospitals, especially in the Asian market, they use robots in order to, to deliver something. It's the way how we can stop this human touch because it's still quite a danger now. And this AI appliances can be intermediaries to do something. Also, the way how AI is used is to share information, is share awareness about the virus. So we can see that most of the global companies, they created chatbots in order to, to make people informed, to understand what are the next steps, what should be done in order to, to stop what we have now. Uh, one of the most interesting also things what AI changed because AI fostered um, traditionally offline industries to go digital. So now we all can see that healthcare went digital, education went digital completely because there is no other way how to do it. Fashion went digital, culture and also tourism. Because like speaking from the tourism perspective, uh, offline, uh, offline side was still important because tourism it's a very offline industry, but now we live in the times of what we can do because we can travel. So, and they found an option of what we can do even in the online world. And again, like uh, to support the statement that COVID-19 led to most of the industries to go digital. So you can see on the screen that uh, the poll created by Brian Solis, one of the famous uh, digital transformation and technology futurists, uh, who transformed, who led you to the digital transformation of your company and most, the most numbers like COVID-19, it's just like fantastic, but still this, this is the reality of what we have now. Uh, talking about tourism in AI, uh, here's very important to highlight that tourism in AI, they were together even before the COVID. Because uh, before the COVID, they were introduced different face recognition and uh, face recognition scanners in airports for the fast onboarding. One of the examples here is like San Francisco airport. They used already for more than one year the scanner, which can scan your iris, fingerprints, your face, in order to skip the line and go directly to the place. So it's, it's already happening. Also, voice assistants used in hotel rooms. Uh, and again, example here is Marriott hotel chain, one of the biggest hotel chains in the world. They use Amazon Alexa to uh, to support clients in order to personalize their stay in hotels, so meaning that like you can change the temperature by your voice, to change the music, etc., in order to make your stay as comfortable as possible. Uh, also, the, there was a statement that we can we are talking about robot hospitality. 
and uh, most another bigger hotel chain like Hilton, they use concierge robots in order to serve their, cl uh, their clients and hotel guests during their stay, for example, like to deliver your food or anything like that. Or if you have any questions, there is no need to go to person because there is a robot which can answer you the questions, especially to those which are frequently uh, asked by hotel clients from previous times. And again, like AI is used for improved personalization offering, telemetry recommendation, which I already mentioned. And also, again, AI in tourism is also used through the way of using chatboards for online customer service. For example, like uh, if you go to some place, you can you can uh, ask on Facebook uh, the chatbot, like how to book next week, please provide me with some additional information, what should be done, or where should I go, etc., etc. So it's quite easy now to do it. Also, also, one of the ways which AI already used for tourism is about cashless payments. And this moment will be mostly used, even widely used because now we are living at the times where, again, this human touch is quite a dangerous thing. And in order to uh, to change the way how we pay, pay paying something and buying something, cashless thing is here for us to come. And another way how the AI is applied for tourism is about using different super apps. By super apps, I mean the different kind of multi-use things for booking the trip, planning it, when you already on the go, on the destination, or if you have some kind of emergency problems, etc., etc. So all of these things can be already implemented in one app, and you can uh, use it anytime you want. So summarizing what I said, so AI and traveling is applied for online customer service. Uh, it can be used in a way of specialized smart apps, for predicting systems, it's again about your personalization of your offers, professional recognition for different data processing, especially for the, the supplier side, and for fraud detection. Because when we are speaking about online, again, we're speaking about privacy and different kind of stuff, this kind of stuff, and ethics, and AI is also can help us to stop different kind of stealing information about your trip and any personal information about yourself, who you are. Um, now we are moving to the most interesting part. So about the travel, how it, how it will be changed after the COVID. But first of all, we need to recollect how was the travel before the COVID. So it's, it was still like a few months ago, but still for us, the travel, what was the travel for us? The travel, of course, is the physical presence. If you're going somewhere, it's essential for you to be in this place. It's essential for you to meet new pe people and learn new culture because that's, that's the way why travel is, exists. Because travel is for face-to-face -face communication, to learn something new, to discover new places, to meet new people, to be there and experience what is going on there. And also travel is all about these five senses. So how you smell something, taste something, touch, hear, etc., etc. But uh, then the COVID-19 happened and we can say that travel is not possible because you can't travel anyway. You can't go to other places to discover. And there is so-called like during COVID-19 travel. So it's probably not the right term, but still what people can do because they're locked in their places, they lock in their apartments, homes, and they would like still to do something because you, uh, you need to sometimes to change your habits and hobbies. Ho uh, and hobbies. And here we, we have this virtuality, because virtuality is a new reality for everyone. And what we can see, what the way, tra way we have, uh, the way of traveling we have now. So we have tours from home. It's quite, quite an interesting example, introduced by one US startup called Vox. So actually, you can book the tour, uh, we, uh, tour with a professional tour guide, which can guide you through the, through the let's say, Museo Vaticano in Vatican, or a gallery of in Italy, or anywhere else. It's, it's not still the same when you go somewhere to the real museum, but still you can learn something new, and there is no need for you to leave your couch. So you can be in your pajamas somewhere else and uh, go somewhere. So quite a nice thing. Another example of uh, the during COVID-19 travels is like live streams which are organized by destination authorities, by the organization which are responsible for the branding of the travels. And I would say it was quite a boom, especially in March and April, because still, first of all, the main idea of these live streams were to 
inform people that there is no need for you to travel now. Please start, stay home because it's quite essential. But we would like to show you how beautiful, beautiful is our destination. So please go there when the virus will be over. And it was quite a success, I would say, for most of the places. Also, another initi initiative here is like vacations. An example here is like how what visit Estonia organized. It's again like they support like please stay home, but uh, stay home, visit your lo your local cities, your country, explore something new because it's like the way how you can also change your uh, your travel behavior. And again, here like uh, here was the rise of the chatbots for future travel purposes. So Booking.com, Airbnb, and different hotel chain they they created lots of chatbots, but mostly in order to inform the customers how to cancel their trips, how to postpone them, or if someone has uh, doubts uh, that uh, whether I want to go there, like if it's safe or not. So there is a chatbot which can answer you this simple question. And also they were created like one online online experiences. An example here, Airbnb, and it was one of the greatest things here because you can dance, you can do salsa, you can cook somewhere else on the other part of the world. It's the same. Like I'm speaking, I'm talking now to, to you, in making my presentation. But still, you can also do something interactive with other people, and that's how a lot of industry did it. And here's the more important scene here: is that automation is the key for the online industry. We are talking about like travels after the COVID. Uh, like, is everyone saying that life won't be the same, of course, and the same concerns travels. So first of all, what we will see, we will see the lines and borders will be longer than ever before. We will need to have this certificate of immunity, and I would say that most of the countries, they are introducing it. For example, like if you're from non-EU and would like to go to European Union, you need to have a proof that you are not the person who will spread the virus to the country. Also, you will pack differently because now we understand that we need to, like sanitizers, masks, etc. They will be with us, and also insurance will be important than ever before. And again, there will be right of domestic travels, a carbon-free flights, and all of this leads to responsible travel behavior, which is the core for a new type of the travel experience. And what is the role of AI in the post-COVID travel? So again. Um, VR, AR, XR, this kind of different kind of uh, technology, deep tech, deep tech, they will gain popularity more and this will lead to immersive travel. So this immersive or it's called also online, uh, online tourism or travel can be an alternative for offline tourism, but still it cannot replace it because it can be the way how you can learn something new. You can uh, visit some galleries of, uh, online and then go to uh, and then understand whether you like them or not, and you can travel them in during the offline travel. Let's say. Also, AI will lead to new hotel models, uh, for instance, like augmented hospitality. Before the COVID Echo Hotel Group, they wanted to introduce this so-called robotized and automated uh, hospitality performances, but then the COVID-19 happened and they stopped this project. But anyway, everyone is talking about that we will see more and have more the smart hotels, which were, will be automated. And we also can have robots hotels, which is the most interesting thing, because probably we will come to places where not the people will meet us, but robots. And I will show you like just very, we just have like a few minutes left. A few examples like AI and post COVID travel, like how immersive travel will look like. So, probably for some people, it will be enough just to put, you know, like helmets or spectacles and different kind of wearables in order to experience travel, and that's enough. Or if you still prefer to go to uh, to the destination, you can experience to go to a hotel which is done by robots. And here on the screen, you can see the hotel from Japan. It's a, it's actually exists, and there is a, also another one, quite a famous one in New York, but I forgot the name of it, where you can come to the reception and you will be met by robots. Fantastic, and probably it's new reality of our tourism. So summarizing, I would like to say that uh, we need to remember that tourism will be different, and it will be different, but it will be, we will, we will travel, of course, but we'll take just in some times, but we need still understand what we'd like to see and how we'd like to travel. And I still think that AI should be a great helper for us. And yeah, 
So thank you very much for attention. So if you have any question, please feel free to ask me here on the chat or in the comment section. If you're interested to learn more about different trial tech trends, anything related to technology in tourism and hospitality, feel free to follow me on Twitter and thank you very much. I'm back to questions. I think we still have time. I'm just like, a, I want a robot concierge. <laughs> I think actually you can order some of you if you want because they're available. I'm just like checking your questions. And do you think? So if you still have any questions and would like to answer something, so we still have just like a few moments because the next person is ready to join this panel. What do you recommend to people working in tourism industry now? I will just uh, answer this last question and then I need to, to move the placement. I would say that tourism is a very interest, interesting industry and please try, if you would like to work there, please go there. But but just like keep your mind open that everything will be changed. And uh, if and I suggest like to be very tech friendly in order to stay in tourism and to follow latest trends and try to find something new. Yeah. So thank you very much and I will leave now because other person's coming. Goodbye.